Good evening and thank you for allowing us to spend the next few moments with you. We're going to continue on in our study in Matthew chapter 6. So if you have your Bibles, you can grab them real quick. And we're going to be looking at verse uh, 25. Last week we had looked at uh, the scripture there in verse 19 where Jesus said, Do not lay up your treasures on earth where that moth and rust uh, destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but to lay up your, uh, yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where neither thieves do break in and steal. For Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so we've been going through this study, looking at motives, because I believe that Jesus is coming down speaking um, here with the Beatitudes about the motives and the intent of our heart. So verse 35 or 25 says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothing. So Jesus starts off here in this verse, um, and he says, therefore, and we have to remember that the word therefore means that we have to go back to the previous uh, thought, which is what we just opened up uh, our lesson on. So Jesus was saying that uh, he's going back to the thought of laying treasures on earth. And we are people that we have to be careful because we can definitely get caught up in laying up treasures on earth. Many a times we can deal with fear, we can deal with worry simply about our tomorrow, not knowing about um, what's going to happen next month, the next six months, the next year, the next five years, the next 10 years. Um, so these are all things that we, we, that are in the back of our mind that we can definitely be concerned about and definitely uh, deal with worry or some people deal with fear about the future. And part of it is the question of when I finally arrive or I'm no longer able to work at whatever age that will be, will I have enough um, to survive on? And so I do not believe that Jesus is referring to or talking about that we should not put back for tomorrow. I don't think that he is talking about us, uh, that, we should, uh, that we should not seek um, to put back uh, in savings or for the future. I do not believe that's not what he's referring to. What I do believe is that he is telling us not to worry or to live in fear because today will definitely take care of itself and that I'm not even guaranteed to get to my tomorrow. And so let tomorrow take care of itself. But my conclusion is this that with what the Lord has blessed me with today, don't go wasting it all today, but make sure I can put back something for the future. Not that I'm worried or panicked or I'm gonna live in fear about it, but I'm going to use wisdom that God has given us to, to be able to say, you know what, tomorrow's coming. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but he's blessed me with a little extra today. So I'm gonna put it back because I don't know what tomorrow will hold. That's a different approach than somebody just living in fear or constantly worried about where I'm going to end up. And how many of you know that many times you can live with worry or fear, wake up tomorrow, and then everything that you thought was going to happen, it just totally went the opposite way. So many times that's happened to me. I was just laid up in bed worried about how my work schedule or how a job's going to go. And then all of a sudden I get to that moment and everything rolls sometimes perfectly, uh, just incredibly awesome. And I'm like, oh my, 
I wasted a good night's rest because I was worried about, about the future. And so um, Jesus says that we should take no thought for your life. Don't worry about it. What he was saying is, is literally the Greek word for thought has its root word for anxious. So Jesus is saying, don't be worried. Don't be worried. And yet many times people, they do worry. And, and so the question is simply this, what are you worried about? Some people are always worried about the past. They can worry about, did I say the right things? Did I, did I make the right decision? Um, did I do the right thing? They're always worried about the past. Some people are worried about the here and the now, the present, about what shall I do or where should I go? And, and then we have those that are constantly worried about the future. You see, yesterday is past and today is almost over and I'm still here and you're still here and that we've made it this far that I had got up this morning and had breakfast and had lunch and at this time of recording, I'll be eating dinner shortly. And so what about tomorrow? How will I survive? How will I eat? How will I pay the bills? How will I uh, take care of the necessities of, of life? And so Jesus is saying, yes, tomorrow is going to come, but yet you and I today, we're not promised that. But when we get there, can I remind us that we serve a God who is constant. He does not dwell in the time frame that you and I dwell in. He is already in our tomorrow. He already knows everything about tomorrow. He already knows what you're going to wear. He knows, he knows what you're going to eat. He knows your very tomorrow. And so we can get so caught up into uh, worrying about it. And yet Jesus says, he said, I don't want you to worry about what you're going to eat or what you shall shall drink. And yet these are the very necessities and things that sustain life is food and water. They are things uh, about survival. And then Jesus is also saying here in this, in this scripture, he said, not only do I not want you to worry about what you're going to eat or drink, but I don't even want you to worry about the clothes that you're going to put on. I want you to notice today that all of us are extremely beyond blessed. Not one of us can say, well, I have nothing to wear. Not one of us. As a matter of fact, we can say that because we're bored with what we have. But all of us have the abundance of things. We have way too many clothes that are in our closet right now. You've got things and don't, don't pause this and go run in there and start cleaning. But there are so many items that you and I have of the abundance. So you're not even worried about the clothes that you're going to put on tomorrow because you're just worried about what style that you're going to wear. And so we have the, the uh, abundance of, of, of things. Um, you know, even those that are, are, are destitute, most of the time they, at least they have a shirt uh, that is on their back. And would you consider and think about it? How many pairs of clothes can you wear at one time? How many shirts can you put on at one, at one time? How many, how many dresses can you put on for the ladies that is? Can you wear it one time? And for the men, how many pairs of pants can you put on at one time? So you think about it. We have, and we are so beyond blessed with the abundance of things. I remember uh, 20, almost 21 years ago now it's been, um, that, that uh, going on 22 years ago, uh, matter of fact, next month, that uh, after living in Europe in, in uh, being over there in Budapest, Hungary, and uh, looking at, at the lack of things, um, the lack of suits and of clothing that the people um, and those that in, in church that I visited in the different villages, what they had, uh, that I was compelled that when I, I was thinking about all the things that I had 
And so I was just a young, young man, I was 20 years old. And I thought, you know, these people could use uh, and be blessed more with these items than I could be. And so I came home with some empty suitcases because I felt like I could be a blessing to help somebody else. And so it is they, that, that people can treasure these things. Um, people can take treasure in, 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 in their food and they can definitely take treasure um, in, in their closet. And we have to be careful to not get caught up into uh, the, the latest fashions and to, to get caught up into all of these things. Uh, because it definitely can get to a point that it, it can uh, rule our life. And so life is more than what you and I are eating. It is more than the clothes that are on our, our body. And yet we need to be clothed and we need to be able to, to eat. But there is a cure about worry. There is a cure about me worrying about food. Number one is that Jesus points out he said, first off, he goes, you and I need to take a, a moment, step outside. Uh, we need to go for a walk and we need to start looking at the birds. I want you to know that the birds, they, that they do not plant gardens, that they, they do not toil in the fields to be able to, to produce a crop. They do not take time to go and harvest a crop. They do not uh, store up food in their barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them and so they are not his children but they are his creation but yet he is today my father and your heavenly father we were made into his image we are uh, his children and so if he will take care of his creation and to be able to feed them that are not his children then my question is, how much more is your Heavenly Father concerned about the things that you need to sustain this life? He is concerned about taking care of and feeding and clothing his very own children. And so they are simply uh, their creation with the Creator. And that's the only relationship that they have. It is a creation relationship. But yet you and I today, that we have a father uh, to a son or to a daughter uh, relationship with our heavenly father. And so Jesus is letting us know, I don't want you to be worried about it because how many of you can just uh, think about it and worry about and add height to your stature? Uh, you may want to do that when you're young and to be able to, 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 to grow and to add an, ex, an extra 18 inches to your height. Uh, but how many of you can even just by the thought of it, just add an inch uh, to your height? And yet, if we can't do it just by our thought, then why are we so worried about uh, the things that God is already worried about and going to sustain and take care of us for? tomorrow. So Jesus said, why are you even worried about your clothes? So the cure for worried, worrying about your clothes is simply to go out and to consider the lilies in the field and how they grow. They don't toil. They don't uh, raise up uh, cotton crops. They don't spin and, and they don't do any of these things. And yet your heavenly father has clothed the field. Consider uh, this, in, that Solomon, the Bible says, with all of his glory and wealth was not as beautiful, beautifully clothed as the lilies in the field. Let that sink in for a moment. Solomon, with all of his wealth, with all of the glory, so it goes back to what is our intent? What is our motive? If all we're doing is trying to attain things in life, then, and, and especially for the things that are in this life and, uh, and on this earth, and man, we are definitely doing it all wrong. 
So think about it. Solomon, with all of his glory, with all of his wealth, Bible says that he was not as beautifully clothed as the lilies in the field. So Solomon, with all that wealth and splendor, was not clothed as beautiful as the flowers. So if God is your heavenly father, and if he knows how to clothe the grass in the field that blossoms today and is dried up and burned into the ovens tomorrow, shall he not much more see that you have clothing that you're taking care of? He knows the necessities of life. He never promised me the abundance of it, but he did promise that he would never leave me and that he would never forsake me. He promised those things. He never promised me that I would have an abundance of, the, uh, of things in this life. And yet we can get so caught up in our life with the abundance of things. But you and I today have to understand that as elementary as it is that the grass is one of the most elementary forms of life, it has, it has body, all right, but it has no soul and spirit. It is below the animal kingdom. And yet, you and I today are above all of those things, made into the very image of your heavenly Father. We are above the animals, above the veggies, uh, uh, all, all the greenery, we're above all of those things. And yet, we were made into the very likeness of God. So the argument is known as, as going from, from lesser to greater, but listen, if God will clothe the grass, which is the least among, among us, we could say, that is soon to perish, will he not much more see that you are clothed? So let us today not buy in to the culture of our world. Help us, Lord, today to not just get so wrapped up into, oh, I've got to have the latest of this and the finest of that, and I've got to do this, and I've got to do that. But many of us today could probably, no doubt, start going through our closet and start finding, dear God, We've got way, so much things and so many things that we could give and be a blessing to those who have not. We are beyond blessed. And so it is today that your heavenly father, he does care. Don't be anxious. Don't worry about your life. Yes, I'm gonna save back a little bit extra for tomorrow, but I'm not afraid and I'm not gonna live in fear over it. We don't know what tomorrow will hold. Don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink. Why worry about these things? Because if something bad did happen, I serve a God who can send a raven to your house. I serve a God today who is an absolute provider. And so it is today that Jesus is reminding us, don't be anxious. You can't add anything into your life. I am the sustainer and the giver of life. So trust me and serve me with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your, all of your strength. Serve me with everything that's within you and I will take care of you. So I pray today, go get a good night's sleep. And don't worry about it, but let the Creator take care of your tomorrow. We love you. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you this Sunday.